Well, I might have lost my mind, but I'm going to trade my 67 Plymouth Fury for a 57 Ford Fairlane 500. I've never owned a Ford before. I've worked on plenty, but I've never owned one. So this will be a new one for me. Um, so let's go get that Ford, I guess. Ford all loaded up. Now it's time to head back to the house. Well, I hope that ain't a, a sign of things to come. Hi, Halston with Obsolete Automotive, and today I'm making a video on a 57 Ford. I've never owned a Ford before. I've driven many and worked on many but this is actually the first one I've owned. So it's all new to me. I'm somewhat familiar with them, but in a lot of ways I'm not. Uh, as you can probably tell from my previous postings and whatnot, I'm more of a Mopar guy, but I do pretty much like all old cars, especially Finn to 50s cars. So with that being said, it's a nice day out today, nice and sunny, and good time to take a little walk around and kind of check out the Ford. So let's get to it. Fun fact, the 57 Ford was the number one selling car in America. You know, it seems with all the 57 Chevys and the lore that people have with 57 Bel Airs and how that was the only car that existed between 1950 and 1965, the Ford actually sold over 170,000 more than Chevy. So believe it or not, there was more Fords on the road than Chevrolets. But I don't know why you don't see 57 Fords on all the walls of diners and drive-ins or on posters or pretty much anything that involves the 50s. They were the number one selling car, but all you ever see is 57 Chevys. And I guess the only colors 57 Chevys came in was red or turquoise. Anyways, uh, the 57 Ford, I think uh, it's a little bit nicer looking than a 57 Chevy, but that's just my opinion. This one is a Fairlane 500. I believe they called this a town sedan. You see it's got that little window in the back on the rear door. It does have this cool gold anodized aluminum insert. And this car is a metallic brown with a beige two-tone. Get a front profile there. You can see it says Fairlane here. I believe the cheaper models said Ford here. That's homemade. Not the emblem, but the insert. 
Not sure why they did that. It's like a, that's just tape. I don't know. I guess I'll maybe peel that off later, see what's under there. You can see this car has full wheel covers and white walls, but you may notice that thing's kind of bubbling. That's because these are actually portal walls. Some of y'all may know what those are, but back in the day, and actually I guess still today, because you can still buy them, you could uh, take black walls and make them into white walls by setting this portal wall in the bead. And so when you pumped up the tire, it'd lock it in and you kind of have white walls. Um, I think these kind of got stained because uh, they stack the tires up. Um, you never want to stack white rubber against black rubber because then it turns the white rubber brown. I'm probably going to take these off. Um, I'm actually going to put new tires on this car because these are questionable um, and they're mixed matched. I'll probably leave the portal walls off because they kind of do that too, which I guess from a distance it looks okay, but when you get up close, you can definitely tell that it's not a real white wall. And they're on all four wheels, so you can see. Peel them back. You can see right there. Portal wall topper. And then this tire on the back is like ancient. It's a Dayton brand. Really the sidewall is getting to be about where you can see through it. So I'm gonna put a set of new tires on it. Probably just some radials, since I think I have some sitting around. Take a look inside. You can see that the Fords have the covers for the locks. It's kind of reminiscent of the uh, earlier cars pretty much everyone went to regular open face locks in this period push button handle there got this cool reflective sticker lifeguard design these fours were supposed to be pretty safe um, at least they advertise them as such the lifeguard package I believe you could get Padded dash, padded visors, seat belts, things like that. See the door panel. I don't know if this would have, I think this would have maybe originally been brown. It's kind of gray right now, which don't really look right, but maybe, maybe it was, I don't know. It just looks kind of odd. Got the custom tape door handle armrest there. Take a look inside, there's your data plate, VIN number. You can see the seats have been redone. I did discover a feeling that there is a seat cover under there still, so the originals may be under there. Um, to what condition, I don't know. Looks like the carpet was replaced. But I guess maybe this stuff was done in the 70s or 80s. Got a velour headliner and wind lace. Got the custom bad boy steering wheel. And you can see the dash layout here. Car says it has 84,306 miles on it. Got your fuel gauge. Temp gauge, speedometer. Over here we got the ignition switch, which on these Fords is on the left side. Lots, your air vent, your right air vent, your wiper switch, which um, these cars actually have vacuum wipers, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> kind of a leftover. Uh, maybe one of the few cars that still had vacuum wipers in 1957. Uh, 
heater controls here, radio obviously, the clock would have gone here. Uh, that's just kind of there to cover up the hole. Now, these gauges are not supposed to be there. They actually cut holes in a dash and added an oil gauge and an amp gauge. Um, I probably wouldn't have done that. They also have the classic little trees uh, in blackberry clove flavor. The ashtray I thought was kind of neat. It uh, rotates back into the dash. See the glove box here with a cool little fort emblem. I think this one got decked out maybe maybe in the 70s. It's nice and fuzzy. I don't think that's original. Not a whole lot of space in there. I actually kind of like the fuzzy glove box. I think I'll definitely leave that. Um, how often do you see a fuzzy glove box? Kind of neat. There's uh, info decals here. What oil pressure, or oil pressure, what engine oil to use, the tire pressures for your different size tires, and then the transmission fluid, what type and how to check it. So you can get a closer look at that. And I guess this would also serve as a cup holder while you're at the drive-in. Um, I'm not sure, but um, I'll just let you see here. The uh, headliner's kind of low, or the roof itself is kind of low. Um, not sure why. Check it out. Now, I'm like not overly tall, but you can see my head rubs the headliner. My line of vision is to the top of the door here. And looking through the front of the windshield, my line of vision is at the top of the windshield. Uh, not sure if that's normal or if the seats are like, I mean, they're actually very firm. So I don't know if they've actually kind of raised the seat up when they added uh, stuff in or foam or whatever. But, you know, this this is not a lot of headroom in this car. You know, I guess you could, you know, lean back a little bit. I just found that kind of odd when I'm in my normal sitting position. Um, my head rubs the headliner. I don't, I don't know. I've not been in enough Fords to compare. I don't know. Maybe y'all can tell me. Anyways, I just thought I'd <laughs> show that. I'd hate to see what the hard top is like if the sedan is like this. So... Anyways, back to the car here. These are not supposed to be there. These are actually lots. The previous owner added these LEDs because the dash light don't work. Um, I will see about fixing the lots in the dash and getting rid of this because that just looks kind of hokey, um, but whatever. This car does have an electric fuel pump installed. And it does start nicely. It's a 292 Y-Block V8. And uh, here in a moment, I'll open the hood so you can take a look at it. Down here on the left side, I can't, I don't know what that, he might have told me what that did, but I can't remember, so I'm just not going to touch it. But we got a parking brake, which has never been touched, so I'm going to leave it down for now. And then here's your hood release, um, which you would pull out to open the hood, but I'll show you what the deal is with that when I get back out of the car to open the hood to show you the engine. And of course, your high-low beam dimmer switch is there, as per most cars of this era, if not all of them. Interior is pretty cool. Door panel's got Mylar front to back. 
This car, I guess, being the fancy model, has got dipped seats, front and back. I don't think there's a speaker in there. It's not um, perforated. And you can see when they redid the interior, they kind of tried to make the package tray match the seats. So kind of a custom, I don't know, look. And like I said, the headliner's been replaced. It's nice velour as well as the uh, wind lace. It's presentable, like I said, not original, but better than nothing. Better than a uh, rusty ceiling with flaky rust coming off on your head. Uh, this car does have padded visors, but you can see somebody's added um, clips here to kind of hold them up, I guess, because the, the visors sag. Um, I guess that's not the worst thing. Uh, so there's that. Padded visors. I believe this had a padded dash originally because you can see this trim here and um, the top of the dash is slightly different color than the bottom. So I believe they removed the bad dash pad and um, painted the dash, which isn't terrible. I think you can get brand new dash pads for these cars, order them brand new, so that's kind of nice. This car, you can see here, has this more oddly shaped vent window um, which would still work door lock knobs are up front and you got your door handle there and your window crank so we can that's how that works so we can uh, get out of the car and I guess we'll look under the hood, see what that's about. Oh, it also has these um, aftermarket vent shades for the windows, which would allow you to have the window cracked down and rain wouldn't run in to the window. So that's kind of handy. I believe the vent windows all had these just to keep rain from just blowing in. Um, the hood latch apparently didn't work, so the previous owner added some hood pins. Um, I probably would have seen about fixing the latch. So now we gotta take these pins off. Um, these 57 Fords, and I believe up to 59, the hood's open backwards, so... It really wouldn't have been a big deal. Um, like the hood would have flown up and blocked your vision. It does have a safety catch. Which would keep the hood from coming all the way up. So you'd push this in here. And you can lift the hood all the way up. There is the latch. To look into that there's nothing on the hood but i think he took it off because the latch didn't work i have to investigate that one as i said before i was told this is a 292 looks like a 292 but uh, i couldn't tell you uh if it was a different cubic inch or not i'm not a ford guy it does have a new aluminum radiator uh, i guess because the old original one Gave up the ghost, got cool chrome valve covers. And of course you gotta have the Edelbrock air cleaner. But it looks like we got a two barrel carburetor on there. Can't really see it. Power steering. These Fords have a crazy power steering setup. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, they're, <laughs> they're uh, they're they're kind of crazy. There's your master cylinder. Looks like you still got a pressure brake light switch. Gobble wiring down there. And a switch. Not entirely sure what that does. Something to do with the... Maybe it's a neutral safety switch or something like that. I don't know. I'm not a Ford person, so I really couldn't tell you. Feel free to comment. 
Uh, you can see here are the uh, vacuum wipers. Uh, still left over from the <laughs> 40s, basically. I'm not sure if they offered an electric wiper on these cars as an option. Uh, somebody could maybe chime in on that one, too. Uh, that's fun there. Looks like duct tape fittings on the carburetor for vacuum lines. I guess that's for the, oh, that's going to the vacuum wipers. So that might be a problem at some point. The uh, throttle, I guess the rod was different sizes. So this has got some booger welds on it. Um, might need to look into that as well. That's interesting. A little chain here. I wonder what that was for. Oh, extra, extra security for the latch, maybe. Um, I wouldn't think that's factory. I'm guessing maybe it slides into one of these holes. Somebody just wanted a little extra security. I don't know. And there's the voltage regulator. Other side here, heater blower motor, there's the cool. Um, I guess, I guess the heater's bypassed. Cause that looks like it's just looped together. I don't, I don't oh. Yeah, there's the, can't really see it too well maybe. Down there is the, uh, the heater hoses going into the, or the heater hose um, connections for the heater core. So I guess uh, heater core is probably bad. I'm not sure. I would guess so since they didn't hook it back up. This distributor. I believe that he said this was converted to electronic ignition. Yeah, okay. I can see the extra wires and that's a Pertronics coil. So this has got a Pertronics electronic ignition in it, which isn't the worst thing. Yeah, that's about all that's going on under the hood. Oh, there's an old motocraft sticker. Can't really make out what it said on it. I would like to find a appropriate air cleaner. Not a big fan of the classic Edelbrock air cleaner myself. Let me get to this I probably wouldn't have done this myself but I guess it works it's for racing I'll just say this is an old NASCAR racer We'll take a look in the trunk. I guess while we're going to the trunk, we look in the back here. And of course, got to have ashtray for the rear smokers. And this little quarter window here is fixed. It doesn't move and this part rolls down. Let's see 
here, Ford Fairlane. Oh, and here's our gas tank. So there's the gas cap. We do have some original Ford keys. And the trunk is the same way it looks like as the uh, cover. So and inside the trunk, we got the original steering wheel. That's definitely going to go back on the car. Ford Master God Power Steering. Horn rings broken, unfortunately, but I'm definitely going to put that back on. Got some fender skirts, four barrel intake. There's the dash clock that needs to go back in there. Carburetor, and looks like the original radiator is in here. And these are like breather caps, I guess, original ones for the engine since it had that like aftermarket one. And chrome headlight rings. Looks like there's a set of those. Um, did did this car originally supposed to have chrome rings, or are these aftermarket? Or I'm not sure. The chrome doesn't look that high of quality, so maybe they were aftermarket. Oh, we got a fuel pump here. Glass bowl fuel pump. Looks like some paint. This one says fuel pump as well. Yep, another one. That one definitely needs a rebuild. And another carburetor. Yes, the original kick panels. And a spare that's not holding air and it's a bear. <laughs> uh, Never heard of Bear brand. I don't think that would... That one's about a see-through one, too. I don't think I want to put air in that, so I'll probably replace that one, too. Fair amount of trunk space in there. I'm sorry, my shadow keeps getting in the way. The sun is high in the sky. The bumper has been painted silver. Not a big fan of that. Got some cool chrome exhaust tips though. Fuel exhaust. And there's the original dealer it looks like. Whole Dobbs. There is still a Hull Dobbs Ford dealership in Birmingham, Alabama, which has been in business there since the 20s, I believe it said. So I'm Pretty sure that's probably where this car came from. Um, which is not too far from home being here in North Carolina. Car does have some rust, some bubbles down there on the lower quarter. That dog leg is uh, rusty. Some little dings and stuff. Looks like some filler in there. some pinholes in there and uh ooh, that is that's probably a hole i mean i can see a lot through it probably could push that through but i'm not going to do it there might be a common rust area on these cars i'm not sure that rocker is a little a little thin right there and some bubbles in that dog leg and this quarter don't look too bad the paint's just thin got some surface rust and there's some like surface rust that's formed around the trim and such in places
All right. Oh, where's the keys? steering wheel is way too small this car does have power steering so I guess it's okay to use seem to work. I guess I probably should have tested that before I went down this hill. She probably needs a little tuning. Transmission does snap right into gear. She's probably a little cold. I mean, it's like 50 some, or maybe 60 some degrees now. Or this could just be how Fords run, I don't know. I'm sure she'll probably be fine once she actually warms up a little bit. Temperature gauge does say cold. Hear that exhaust note. Hopefully you didn't see any smoke. No, I was told this engine was rebuilt. Um, it actually seems like it might be rebuilt. Yep. <laughs> Dang, I hope I didn't lose the hubcaps. I already lost one when I unloaded it. Okay. Let me stick that back on there after I... I guess the guy didn't quite get the hubcaps on top. What is that? Oh yeah, copy of uh, Fairlane Club of America, May to June 2012. Might be some good reading in there. Alrighty, there you have it. And that's a 57 Ford Fairlane, uh, Fairlane 500. In a nutshell, I'm sure there's probably more to talk about, uh, but I'm not well versed on these cars, so feel free to fill in the missing information in the comments. Um, and uh, we'll see if I was crazy for trading for this 
57 Ford. Uh, it's pretty cool. I like the styling, don't get me wrong. Um, hopefully this car doesn't prove to have any problems. So far it seems okay. Some little things to work out, but really not bad. Anyways, I guess catch you on the next one. <laughs>